Welcome to Nugget 98 with Steve Groman. We're going to finish up on the Meteor Crater in Odessa. As we start this one, I want to say something, though. I want to make sure people understand. We're not trying to be rude or cruel or mean or anything about these things. The fact is, folks, that people tend to believe these issues. And we say we believe the Bible and we need to believe the Bible and we do believe the Bible. But a lot of times we compromise with what evolutionists say in some form or fashion. We need to realize not to do that. The Bible explains why and how and when all this kind of all these kind of formations happen. What we are trying to do, actually, is to encourage you to understand these features and these signs so that when you go out with your family, because when we were out there, there was a family out there, it would have been nice to know that that mom and dad were armed with information like this and were able to explain to their children what this probably really was. And but not more, to be gullible and just take this stuff right. hook, line, and sinker. To be crit- have critical thinking, as we've been repeating over and over again. Correct. More likely than not, they were absorbing every every minute of it and believing what it says. Because so, it sounds exciting. It really does. Now, it says, it is known, there's that word known, that the mass of an estimated 70 tons, which formed the main crater, was traveling at such a high rate of speed that it exploded and vaporized upon contact with the Earth. Therefore, the main crater is an explosion crater. Okay, so that's interesting. The four Smaller craters were formed by smaller masses of meteoric material. The craters were formed by the impact of the meteorite, and much of the meteoric material was buried at the bottom of the small craters. These smaller craters are, therefore, impact craters. Now we know the difference between an explosion crater and an impact crater. Now this is where it really gets interesting. The Odessa meteorite is an iron or metallic meteorite. Only about 10% of all meteorites striking the Earth are metallic. The remaining 90% are classified as stony meteorites, and resemble rocks found on Earth. That's convenient, isn't it? I think so, too. It's kind of what we've been saying all along. These things were formed at the time of the flood. And that makes them more valuable because they're harder to find because they look just like the rocks here on Earth. The Bible says in Genesis 7-11, this gives our mechanism from a biblical perspective. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day, were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. Absolutely. And it would do all of these features that we see. Crater Lake National Park. We've been there a few times, actually, but it's a beautiful... Where is this Crater Lake? Where does the water reside? In the caldera of a volcano? Yeah, it's in a volcano, but you'd never know it. We've been to many places that have craters, volcanic craters and such. And it's amazing how often they always look the same. They're all basically the same. They're usually round. They may have odd features just because of erosion and the way they form, but uh, at, an, at an angle. Coming the way in they at always... the angle like they show yeah, the impact the of these show. things. Which means if craters that they are saying are meteorite craters, every, whether it's, again, on the moon or here on Earth, every one of them would have had to hit an exact 90-degree angle, which is just impossible. And that's why we're showing you these pictures of extinct volcanoes, active volcanoes, geysers, all these things have a similar shape. And mud pots, here's Mount St. Helens, that the shape is basically the same. It's a bowl. It's a caldera shape. Right. And these are things that happened from underneath when the fountains of the Great Deep broke up. We have a mechanism. They know these are volcanoes. They know these are geysers. But yet when there's something out in Arizona or in this place here in Odessa, and why they're so rare is because I guess they can't link it to a volcanic chain or link it to something else, so they just claim meteor? Yes, they just claim meteor. Like we discussed in the previous two nuggets, there's so many discrepancies in what it is they say and how they say it. But this article from New Scientist way back in 2004, they're talking about their... Well, the way the article starts, the world's largest mass extinction at the end of the Permian period 251 million years ago was probably not caused by massive asteroid impact, despite recent claims that it was. Oh, I've got to interrupt you. That's funny. Permian period. And that whole area out there is the Permian Basin. The Permian Basin. Basin. Correct. Correct. It's all the same time frame. Well, their time frame anyway. It says in the middle, these people are investigating this thing, and they found that the, the rocks were rich in iridium. They lacked another distinctive footprint of asteroids. Hi. They say that asteroids, typically, they are rich in iridium. One of the guys suggests here that iridium that others have cited as evidence for an asteroid impact was concentrated in the rocks by natural processes in the oxygen-starved waters of the seafloor at that time. He goes on to say there really is no credible and unambiguous evidence for an impact. The thing is, these things are 
typically asteroids are rich in iridium. And they say that they are, uh, it's like a signature that that's it's an asteroid. Yet they say natural processes caused by oxygen-starved waters can also cause this. At the time of the flood, everything is underwater, everything is dead. I would dare say there's a, a massive amounts of areas that have oxygen-starved waters at that time. Once again, we are the ones with the mechanism to explain why the finds are what they are and when it happened. These are all simply done at the time of the flood. And again, here is the definition of a meteor, a meteoroid, and an asteroid. And here again is the Greek definition of aster, which means a star. I want to recommend that you go back and watch the previous nuggets on this meteor crater over in Odessa, and also to go back and watch Nugget 85, which refers to planet, and where planet can be found in the Bible. You might find that very interesting if you have not watched Nugget 85. All right, well, I think that we covered that meteor crater pretty well. I think so. Unlike, sort of like the dust and the dirt and the silt that has filled it in. Yes, it's just not what they claim it to be. That's the problem. Right. Well, thank you. Thank you.